So what is genetic genealogy? Well, it's DNA testing that's done explicitly for the purposes of learning about your roots. There's all sorts of myths that circulate about this. And right off the bat, I want to get rid of this one. People think it's the same thing that you see on CSI. It is not, OK? The tests that are done for genealogical purposes are more restrictive. So in a sense, they're more innocent. They're not giving away all your secrets. When you've got a name like Bath, which is quite unusual even in Scotland, um, and when every time you pass your name over to somebody to write it down, you have to spell it, you wonder where it comes from, you know? So my parents did a lot of research in the 1980s and they had a sort of ancestral research thing done and they kind of got stuck. We're actually going to do a living case study. Did any of y'all catch BBC Breakfast this morning? Anybody so you might know? Well, I'd like to introduce to you people from this case study. Remember I showed you the video with Chris Haley, Alex Haley's nephew? Guess who's joining us right here? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Haley. And a little bit of a surprise, he DNA tested and he met a cousin of his this morning, actually in the hotel lobby on their way to sit, do uh, BBC breakfast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is June Bath Black. This is, you're hearing this, this is hot off the presses. This is a brand new story that's just happened. Well, um, a friend of mine had mentioned to me she'd like me to take a DNA test because it would help promote just this new facet of genealogy that was like a, a, a science that made it easier, perhaps, to reach out and touch somebody you had never think or thought you could reach out and touch. And she also told me it was going to be painless, which I was very in the mood for, because I had heard that you might have to draw blood and things of that sort, which I was never into. Usually I use a Q-tip with my ear. Yeah. <laughs> Swabbing, swab number one. Uh. <laughs> ah, love a parade. <laughs> swab number two. This is on the left side of my mouth. As you notice, the right side looks like this. The left side is very different. Ah. With who do you think you are being on TV, you know, the BBC here, I don't miss an episode. I buy all the books. I'm intrigued by it all. So when the Colin Jackson episode was on and he had his DNA test done, which sort of showed his Scottish roots, you know, that was mesmerizing to me and I thought that was fantastic. So, enter the picture DNA testing. As I mentioned to you earlier, uh, we were at a conference about 18 months ago and Chris was here and um, he gamely agreed to take a DNA test with camera rolling and so forth. And so he took his test and he got his results. Let me just kind of point out the tree here just to get you the, the, the organization here. Here we have Chris down here. Here's Alex, his brother, his father, uh, Julius. We have both to Simon, and then we have Alec up here. But here we have this unknown bath according to the family tradition, right? So what we see here is if this family story is true, right, this unknown bath would have given his Y DNA to Alec, who would have given it to Simon, who would have given it to Julius, who would have given it to Chris. So if the bath story is true, Chris should be storing, sporting the same Y genetic signature as the bath family. So my dad was visiting us over the holiday period and um, persuaded him to do the DNA test and we sent it off and wow, <laughs> you know, what else can I say about wow. Um, dad sent me some information that gave me markers and I started looking through Scotland's people because I thought, well, what if we do get a match? I need to have a bit more meat in the bones than the information that they had. So Chris just had to sit there and wait, and wait, and wait. And he had no matches until, what was it, about 10 days ago? Something like I that? I think at most it was 10 days ago, something like that. 10 yeah. days ago. All of a sudden, in Chris's map, look at that little orange man. Sitting there in the British Isles, he's got a match. Well, that's kind of interesting. And the name is Thomas Back. I hadn't really gotten to the point where I really understood the, the, how DNA testing is done. But when I got that email, it was more like, wow, this is, this is too, 
too obvious to turn turn away because there were only two hits that were of this the orange and or what was the green strand and one was anonymous so there was nothing going there so the second one I mean how really how could you ignore it check my emails and talk about excited I was just about hitting the roof bouncing up and down I'm saying we've got a reply we've got a reply you know and Oh, I can't believe it. It seems really nice. I sort of sent him a quick email. We were heading for the train. So when I got back, there was another email. So I sort of apologised and said, we've been away with the kids for a couple of days. Been to see a few shows. And then he responded talking about music. And we just seemed to start a dialogue. And the, the emails went backwards and forwards. And then the next thing, I think it was Sunday morning, was the bombshell, you know. How about I fly over and we all meet up? And it was like... <laughs> I see this camera, so it must be you. Oh, you <laughs> 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 What it means to me in terms of the Haley legacy is that it's verifiable and confirmable that the oral history that, that Uncle Alex passed on through the years is more true than fable. And I think many people, which has hurt me personally, and I think some of the family, is when people have said, oh, well, he made this story up, that's a lie, it's not true, it's plagiarized, or things of that sort. And this, I think, confirms not only that this specific line in the book Queen is traceable back to a European in the British Isles, and now we find Scotland, but perhaps that some of these other stories that have been denigrated so much in the past may have more credence as well. They're pretty close, I think, but, but you have my rings. <laughs> <laughs> Genetic testing, eh? what it's helped us to do and to make that connection where so far my paper trail stopped and the lack of documentation on Chrissy's side, we might never have made that connection. We might never have known. Um, I've been laughing with my dad all week and saying there's been lights flashing in my house and this, that, and the next thing I said, it's my mother sitting up there giving me, you, come on, get on with it, go, you've got to do it. And as I say, it's kind of round in that circle, you know, back to where, but it's just the tip of the iceberg because there's so much more to do. Scottish is what we are, right? Yeah. Well, I'm definitely Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's good. Um, I don't know if I'll be wearing a kilt tomorrow because my legs have hair, but, but by the end of the week I have nair and I think I'll make it work. <laughs>